Okay. Take four. Take four. I'm not going to say anything horridly incorrect <laughs> this time. Um, or Kim's going to kill me. It's July 21st, 2022. Uh, Noel Williams, Optimal Health Associates. So first and foremost, it's hot in Oklahoma. It's hot everywhere. Let's all get through it. Uh, number two, the B5 variant is picking up steam as expected, as I said last week. And so um, I got something right in case for those of you who like to point out every mistake, the, few, the ones that I've made repetitively for years on end. So thank you for that. Um, uh, and so it is picking up. It evades the vaccine, hence why Biden got it. It's, the, it's, it's everywhere. It's on you. It evades the vaccine. It will even evade prior infected. But prior infected, I want to emphasize this, are less likely to get reinfected. They probably are looking at the latest that I've seen. We're thinking about 15%. It's a little higher probably for prior or, or just for vaccinated without infection. Um, and, you know, it's common sense. And again, I'm going to go through some basic immunology for uh, people who are might want to remember immunology, like if you happen to be a doctor or uh, someone like that. So if you get an infection, where does it start in, with COVID? It starts in your face, in your mouth, and your nose. So what's the, gonna happen? You're gonna gen, generate IgA antibodies. IgA antibodies are persistent, they last in your saliva. They inactivate the virus very, very well. Do you get an IgA antibody if you get a vaccine? No, okay? Now, if you do a nasal one, which there aren't any, it, that's one of the potential advantages for a flu vaccine, given that way, if you believe in flu vaccines. But you get IgA antibodies, two, you get T cell immunity, and three, you get B cell immunity or antibody production. But that combination, it certainly looks like it's stronger than the vaccine. I'm not saying that getting the vaccine is an error, because I mean, I got the vaccine, Kim got the vaccine, all, the, all my children got the vaccine. They're just saying that infection is still the bomb because you get more levels of protection. And to ignore that, which several authors are now starting to put papers out on, is uh, again, interesting, but perhaps uh, a problem that the NIH and CDC, yes, and I'm going to continue to complain about them because I think they've totally failed. Um, not acknowledging that and not thinking about it and not cognating on it um, and just pushing this narrative that doesn't make sense to me. Uh, because remember, if mitigation strategies worked, um, we wouldn't be having more COVID. They don't work, okay? The proof's in the pudding. That's why there's more infections. And because it's a virus that's a respiratory virus and the micron size is as little as one micron or less. And so it's gonna go through everything. And again, I'm all for people wearing masks. If it makes you happy, wear them. If it makes you feel calm and it keeps your serotonin higher, it is definitely worth doing. But if we want to try to actually have a solution to COVID, it is going to be natural immunity and balancing of your immune system, which takes getting your mitochondrial, mitochondrial, sorry, mitochondria to work. And for those of you who, again, are more science-based or physicians, maybe I would encourage you to review um, mitochondrial nutrition and how it works in your immune system. And if you have good mitochondrial status, your helper cells that drive your, t drive your T cell immunity are much more effective than your B cell immunity. And your T cell immunity is what matters most for viral infection protection and yeasts and stuff like that. It's very important. It's very clear. I mean, it's not stuff that we had to really think about. We're going back to cellular organelles. And that's where I am with a lot of what we do in our clinic. So again, it's not reactive medicine, it's proactive medicine. So B5 is going to be here for a while and then it's going to shift and there'll be B6 or B7 and we're going to be running through this and we just all have to get used to it. It's a bummer. My hope is that we're going to have not more vaccines, but we're going to have antibodies available that work, that are safe and boring and they won't be suppressed by the federal government. Uh, additionally, this week, um, just as an update, uh, Rand Paul has been I think interacted with Fauci briefly, but reminded Fauci that when the, how, if the Senate switches to the Republicans, he will have to testify for the first time under oath um, about COVID and that uh, Rand Paul's very much looking forward to that. Um, so we'll see if he resigns beforehand, but my prediction is he will resign if the Senate turns Republican because he's not going to want to be forced to testify under both. Um, so just interesting stuff. So right now, since COVID is everywhere again, and people are getting it, um, we routinely 
have them pulse their vitamins, we give them steroids. Why do we give them steroids? Decreasing inflammation. I had someone complain that giving antibiotics that we were doing wasn't the right move. But again, it's again someone who doesn't read the literature. So I love people who criticize someone like me who's taken care of almost 2,000 outpatient COVID patients and has had 11 hospitalizations or 12 with one death, which is still horrible that we had one death, um, who's never done it, doesn't read the literature and complains. So the first thing is 50% of the hospitalizations are secondary to a bacterial infection that's concomitant to COVID because your immunity goes down, the bacteria rev up and you get a secondary bacterial infection. So yes, there's a little bit of a problem with globally using antibiotics for colds and colds, but colds don't lead to pneumonia like COVID does. So that's the difference. We're trying to limit hospitalization, especially not so much now, but we still care about them because the people, because we don't want them to get sick, is there was no hospital beds. So if there's no hospital beds and you have no options, you do the stuff you have to do to keep the patients from getting sick and having to go to the hospital where there's nowhere for them to go, where they can die. But people don't understand that because they're too busy criticizing people who actually are doing the job, which gets really tiresome. And if you want to take care of COVID patients, outpatients, put a sign on your door and say, I'm willing to help you versus hiding in an ivory tower and complaining, which I'm very tired of. It's just tiresome. Sorry, I am. I'm tired. Well, anyway, enough of that. So anyway, COVID, currently is is going to be here you need to take your vitamins we've gone over that we need to be outside we need to exercise we need to stop smoking we need to try to lose weight we need to do the healthy things that help our immune system which again is not telling a patient who has covid take jello and good luck that isn't going to work kim any questions are we good uh just a couple I'm sorry I got intense there, but it just it just gets annoying to have armchair quarterbacks who don't do anything to help the patients and are the same people who told them, oh, t take chill and go home and good luck, who don't read, who don't understand long haul, don't understand even why they get vascular disease, criticize people who are actually doing it. Sorry, I'm ranting. Ah. <laughs> it's like having a chihuahua, but biting at you. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, I feel better now. Is there anything to people that had original COVID not being as susceptible to the weaker versions that are happening now? Like if you had original COVID, you have a higher immunity to one's mouth. Okay. My opinion is if any, if you had any natural infection, you have much higher immunity than someone who hasn't been vaccinated and you have higher immunity than someone who's been vaccinated. But the problem is whether it was original Delta or any of the early Omicron variants, B5 circumvents a lot of that, which is the same reason that you're at. So that leads to your risk for infection. And so B5's ability to circumvent the vaccine I think is pretty uniformly understood, but it can also circumvent original infection because the original vaccine was for the original infection. So it can get around both, but not quite as much because again, there's some different layers to your immunity. But even Omicron, like I had uh, whatever the original Omicron one or two in January or end of December, I mean, I have about probably about a 15% risk of getting uh, B5. That's why I'm taking my zinc, I'm doing my vitamins. I'm doing everything I can to make my immune system ready to fight it off. Okay. And then I guess in your last video, you talked about Q-certain or however you say that. Quercetin. Quercetin. Is there... It's taken me two and a half years to say that correctly. <laughs> is there a dose, a recommended dose? There is and we'll post it. I'm sorry. I, I, maybe 400 TID or something milligrams, but quercetin, you can look it up online. So quercetin is one, it's an antioxidant. Two, it's a mitochondrial nutrient, which I did not know until recently because it's a constant struggle to know stuff. You have to just read, read, read. But quercetin also is a zinc ionophore like hydroxychloroquine. And so it puts zinc into viral 
molecules and viral molecules hate zinc and it kills their ability to reproduce. And so if you can stop them reproducing, it's harder to get sicker and it slows the reproduction rate. And that's where Omicron, um, while not as infectious in the lungs, but can make people feel sick and ill and cause fatigue and tiredness and joint pain and all this stuff, um, still wears people down. I actually have a, someone who um, got, I believe Delta, who we've gotten much better and he was in today and he's still suffering from what we call autonomic dystonia. He's much, I mean, he's much better um, through a variety of vitamin infusions, ozone and everything. But he's decided that the next step for him is he's gonna fly down to South America and do a stem cell infusion. He wanted my opinion on it, I thought it was brilliant. Um, obviously not everyone can afford that, but uh, it's still, I wish we had the ability to do that. There are some phase two trials now for long haul COVID coming out using um, stem cell derivatives, but again, they're not um, easy to get into or find. Um, but I think that's, you know, when you start using those kinds of products for restoration, they restore your infl inflammasome balance and can be very helpful. Um, just interesting that people, you know, do their own research. This person happened to be a physician and is wants to be back up to snuff and he's gotten a lot better but he knows he's not where he wants to be or needs to be and so he's going full monty and gonna do that in south america because again the fda won't let us do that here because it, i won't even go there um what omega-3 does for kids uh, omega-3 doses for kids is based on one their ability to swallow pills and so if they can swallow a pill, you'd love to, and if, if they're over seven or eight, I mean, 500 milligrams would be great. If they're, or maybe a poundage would be better. You know, if they're over 60 pounds, 500 milligrams is great. Anything, you know, that range, 350 to 500. If they're under um, 50 to 60 pounds, probably 350 milligrams. And you want to be an EPA and DHA. You always want both. You don't want one. You want both. And I always prefer the, the ratio three to one EPA to DHA, but kids, you can be a little different. It could be more one-to-one -one and it would still be fine. We have different intents with children because we're trying to help brain development and nerve function. So a little more DHEA is great. EPA works in the brain too. Those are the two subgroups of the essential fatty acids that are in fish oil. Um, we actually are, have located a um, algae-based fish oil that has EPA and DHEA in it. So we'll be having that soon. That will be cool because for the vegans, it's uh, hard for them to they don't want to really take fish oil. Anything else? Nope. Okay, that's it from Kim. Uh, I hope everyone has a good week. Stay positive, uh, you know, and just let it happen. You're going to be fine. Take care.